Hi everyone, my name is Benita and I will be speaking about so far about my experience with the Word of God and entrusting the will and purpose of God. Um, so far on my work with God, I've really um, one thing that stood out for me is trusting God in the process and trusting God through like a silent season when it feels like um, you've probably prayed and certain things shouldn't will happen to you so just trusting god to help you through that whole process and through the whole faith i've always been expecting that you know whenever i pray for certain things things should just happen being born again being fire for, being on fire for god and everything so i just expect oh life like everything about life would be like asap <laughs> immediately you pray you get the result and all but truly over the years i've come to understand that we're going through a process just like how gold will always go through the fire god is refining us basically and in the times when it feels like our prayers are not answered it's actually still in the will of god i got to understand most importantly about the will of god because most times we just believe that oh the, if it's the will of god it's going to be so smooth and so rosy and all by the end of the day through all the turns and through everything that's happened that's where we, our purpose is bettered and that's where the will of god is actually manifested so i i, I had a message once that was in um after i'd gone through what i'm going to share now and and then i learned that tr when like most times we pray, oh God, what's my purpose? What's my purpose? What, what am I on earth for? And everything. But at the end of the day, it's not basically what what we, like God shows us our purpose through the things he lets us go through. Because when you go through that phase, oh, your new purpose is better than you find that, oh, I can do so much more than what I think I can do. God has placed in me a lot and God has placed in me and God has allowed me to go through this process. So when I come out from the situation, I can show that, you know what, God can bring a person out of it. So God allows us to go through that process. In that process, a new purpose is better and that way we can help everyone who goes through that same process. I had my husband in 2018 and we got married in 2019 and after we got married we got pregnant initially before i got married i i knew like my circle was was irregular but i was like oh whatever nice i don't really have to stress about period every month and all but then i found i had pcos that's called polycystic ovarian syndrome and so i was kind of like i can't why should i have pcos like i don't want to have any issues conceiving and everything so i started really praying to god and believing because i didn't want to have to like wait and i'm not saying waiting is those that waiting is bad or anything anyone who is waiting i pray that god gives them the fruit of the womb so a month after we got married i found out i was pregnant and so i was really excited so we went for the scan and when we did the scan we found out that we we're expecting twins so we're really, really excited. I remember when I called my husband after, because I went for the scan alone, he was at work. And when I called him, he literally started speaking in tongues when I told him I had twins. It was going to be twins. And so we're really, really excited. And so the whole journey started to pregnancy, um, change of taste and all of all that. But all of all that was really good because we were like, oh, we're expecting our babies and we'll go through all the process at the end of it all. So when I was about um, 14 weeks, I noticed that I was always having like some pain on my side. So I went for a checkup at the hospital and the doctor was like, oh, so I was supposed to do a scan. And when I went for in for the scan and the, the, the doctor and the um, sonographer was like, oh, no, you don't need a scan. It's twins. You should be expecting this yada, yada, and all of all that. So I said to the guy, oh, could you just check me because I don't know why I'm feeling this pain. And so he just quickly checked, like checked, did the whole thing quickly and he didn't really look and like, oh, I can see them moving up and down, active babies and all of all that. So I left and I went home. 
so when I was about 19 weeks I when I was about 19 weeks I started um, I started noticing that like had like water coming out and I knew that water wasn't supposed to start rushing out now coming out now probably too was when I'm about to give birth like when the sacs when um I have the proper water by water breaks and all of all that so I had to go to the hospital so I went to the hospital and when I got there and they said so I so they said I had to go for a scan so when I went for the scan on my way to the scan I was just like praying I was like oh god like what's all this hope it's not going to be anything I was just like father you know you say whatever you alpha you omega whatever you do whatever you start you end and you know all of all those words I was just taking the words in and speaking it and confessing so after I did the scan, the sonographer was like, um, do I, have, have they told me what was happening? I'm like, I don't understand what you mean by what's happening. So she said that, oh, the membranes were bulging out. I'm like, what is membranes are bulging out? <laughs> like, I don't understand. Because, see, I, known, I knew that there was something probably about, um, what's the thing called, when with high blood pressure, I knew there was issues around that. That women have no I didn't do I didn't have any of that but I never knew there was something I had to do with membranes bulging and all of all that complication so I took the report back to the hospital and so make I showed the doctor it was like oh wow this is really urgent we have to put you on bed rest you have to stay you have to stay upside down for three days to see if the membranes will go back in and then you have you have to be eating on the bed you have to you won't stand up for a bath, you'll be cleaned on the bed and everything. And I'm just like, oh, don't understand. I just left my house walking and you're saying I have to be upside down, not even just lying down on the bed. I have to be upside down for three days. And so I was like, oh, yeah, good and fine. Basically, it's for the babies. God is going to do it. You know, when I come out of this process, I'm going to write about how God was there for me and how I gave birth despite all. So I so I called. Um, so my husband came to meet me. I told my siblings, my parents, and everything. And, and yeah, so the first day came. I had to stay upside down, like tilted head down, my legs up. And so um, so that that continued. They gave me a bath on the bed. I had to eat on the bed. I had to eat that. It was very uncomfortable. And I remember making videos of myself. Say, oh, like when. I thought oh, my I made videos. I'm like, oh, so I went through this process. So I was just speaking like I'd come out through the process and just trying to make a video telling people how the process was and everything and thanking God and saying and I made a video also saying to the babies that oh see the process mommy went through to give birth to you and all of all that. Yeah, so on the third day, so the aim of the being upside down was to be able to get the babies back in to 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 do the procedure so there's a procedure that they had to do to like tie these cervix to keep the babies in and so on the third day um when the doctor came and, and the and the consultant came to check he said i was the babies had come back down a bit so we do the procedure so i went in for the procedure and that was good and it said oh, it was good so i was really thankful to god i was really like praying speaking in tongues thanking god everyone was happy i had all my family and friends family friends came over to see us at the hospital and like we're really happy about it and so this was about on the 5th of august 2019 so 5th of august 2019 so um so then two days so the, so the hospital like i have to still stay on bed rest so they could monitor me and everything and so this time around i didn't have to stay heads down i could stay flat on the bed but i couldn't like walk so i had to if i was going to like get like fresh air i would just probably go in a wheelchair and um so um on like so on the sixth i had to change to like another word because i didn't like the word i was inside so i wanted somewhere more private since i was going to stay there a bit longer so i moved over so the day i moved over to the next word i noticed that I was spotting and all and so the doctor I had to call the doctor and when the doctor came the doctor was like oh take this do this do that and all of that so I kept doing it and so on the 8th of August and at night I noticed that I was having like cramps 
like contractions and and then the and then the sporting still continued so um I'm oh, sorry, this was on the 6th, not on the 8th, this was on the 6th of August, because my husband's birthday was on the 7th of August. So on the 6th of August that night, the doctor was like, oh, they're sorry, but they have to take out this stitch because the babies, had to, the babies cannot stay any longer. And if they stay any longer because the water around them is already infected, it's going to infect me and that's going to lead to seps- sepsis and all of all that complications and so I was just imagine because i was hoping that you know seven is my husband's birthday testimony of us going home i'd even booked so from the hospital bed i booked like saxophonist i was saying for him at home and and all of all that for his birthday and so just and so just finding out on the sixth that night that you know the babies had to be born earlier than expected and all yeah, so I prayed and cried and everything and just like, oh God, like, you know, like I've really trusted you through this process. You say, you because I also like the message from uh, Love for Edipo, where she, which was about, she went, I think she lost a child and then the next time she was like, whatever God of Alpha is the Omega. So I was really holding on to the word that whatever you Alpha, you Omega, you can't, wherever you start, you promised us that, you know, wherever you start, you're going to complete it. And so, so, was he really believing God for a miracle that probably when we get in, they'll see all the babies have gone back in. I was confessing, babies go in and everything and all of that. So on the sixth night, we finally, the doctor was like, oh, sorry, but we just had to take out the babies. So we had to go into the, into the labor room and, and, and this time around, like, it's different when you're going to the labor room. This was my first time. So my thought of labor room is to have babies and all. So the doctor was like, um, no, sorry. So what happened that night is we just took out, they had to take out the stitch first for the babies to come out. So that night we just went to the labor room to take out the stitch and then I went back to my room. So on the 7th of August, I was really hoping still that, you know, God would just do that, these babies will stay. Like the doctors would just come and say, ah, these babies are no over and all over. So that eight, I started feeling contraction more like the ones I felt the previous day was small, but the next day it was like real, like the full, full on contraction and everything. And so the doctor came back and he said, Oh, I'm sorry, but you have to have the babies now. And I was just like really heartbroken. I'm like, God, you know, like, oh. and that was his birthday. So I was just like, ah, oh, can this miracle just happen? Like everything she just done. But yeah, the babies had to be born and so I had to go through the whole process of delivery, pushing and imagine, so yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we, I gave birth to them and and so my husband and my sister, because my mom just went home to get her things and everything, so it was my husband and my sister, Ugi, that was there and so they saw the babies come out so i could see in their face like they're literally crying and i've never seen them cry and it was really hard to like behold just seeing them crying and i cried myself like from the depth of my heart and you know when you just feel like you've been let down by god like you know but yeah and so the babies came out so we're hoping that okay probably the babies could stay like incubator you know, but they're like, oh, sorry, they're not up to 21 week or I think Nigeria is 24 or 5. And if they are brought, maybe 22 or 23. But because they are 19 weeks, so you had to, they couldn't even stay in the computer. So I saw them they were breathing for a while. So I thought the doctors were like, you have to go and bury them. I'm just like, it's not enough that you give it to them. You still have to go and bury them. Yeah, so my dad came, my sisters and everybody and was just really sad and and so my dad said something. He said, God's will is still his will. Whatever he says is going to happen, is going to happen. And the babies that are here to stay will come and they will stay. So there's no need for you people to like be down, be downcast and everything. And all of this was happening on his birthday day that was supposed to be like one of the best days. So yeah, so they went to do the whole burial and everything that was involved. And so we came back. 
Yeah, so that's one phase that was gone. So there's another phase of going back home. Because I left home being pregnant and I left home looking at my bump every week and all of all that. So going back home without a baby, without anything. And so I went back home. So my mom actually still came for like a munko, though she knew there was no baby. So it's just sad to see my mom cooking and doing all the things and asking me if she wants to press my body, she wants to make hot soup, pepper soup for me. I really felt like, you know, when you failed and, and you know, all of all that process. So my tango basically through all the hurts, like through all the pain, I was still able to like worship. I think one thing that really helped me through the process is the word and worship and so there are certain scriptures that I was able to get hold of and and one of them is um Isaiah sixty six verse nine which says I will not cause pain without allowing something new to be born, says the Lord. Then another one is Psalm thirty four verse eighteen. The Lord is close to the broken hearted and save those who are crushed in the spirit. And then the last one I had was Genesis nine verse sixteen. It says, whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. So was that prayer, I was trying to, I was doing an application and, and before I went for the interview, I'm like, God, you say you're close to the broken hearted, please help me through. Like you've promised me that you're close to me and you're going to give me like everything at this point. And I thank God I got the application. And so, so far, like all I just want to say is, we should just trust in God throughout every process and throughout every silent season because God is faithful. Like sometimes you may we may just feel like like we're going through the worst. Like when we think maybe we're as Christians or because we've prayed, certain things shouldn't happen to us. But in all of that, God is still using it to glorify his name and to also bless us and to and to bring out his purpose, just like I, I learned through this process that you know purpose can still be built. Purpose is also found in pain. Like when God allows you to go through a particular pain, He's actually betting a new purpose in you, and He's allowing you to go through that thing so that through you other believers can you know have that confidence that oh if this person can go through this, I can I can also go through this, and it's also refining us. And and lastly, like God is the master strategist like he makes everything work and i've seen it so far from then till now in every in every areas of our lives and even up till now like certain times when we ask him and when we're praying for certain things and when it doesn't work and it feels like you know every everywhere it's just somehow by the end of the day when it works out i'm just so amazed at how god has put everything together how we make arrange this at this particular time and how his timing is so perfect like even if certain things we have prayed to him for gets delayed by a month or two when that time comes you just notice that you know everything is just working in sync and in in accordance to his will and through the and through going through that um, stage I was able I was able to learn certain things that which I've been willing to share and I've shared with quite a number of people which has actually helped them through through um, child loss of a child or just life generally life struggles and challenges that come to us as human beings and I just also want to use this opportunity to just tell us to trust God trust him through the silent season trust him through the happy times trust him through the not so happy times because he is able to do all things.